Thank you for your time questions. So that was the last slide of our um, first meeting and that's the end of my presentation. So does anyone have any questions? Very impressive presentation. Save it um, because it'll be good when you're applying for college and med school uh, to show that you started this when you were a junior in high school. Secondly, I'd love for you to share these slides with all of us um, that joined this call. Uh, I'd like to present it to our um, board for Clark County Medical Society and see if they might uh, invite you to present your, your story um, because I think this is very important to clone widely. I'd be interested from the host of folks um, what your perspectives are of whether this is complements or competes with HOSA and are there HOSA chapters at most high schools in Southern Nevada? It's not, I wouldn't say, I thought it might be a competition, but I don't think so after hearing Brianna's awesome presentation, by the way, I'm highly impressed by you. I, you would be one of my favorites, just like all of them are all my favorites. Um, but um, I, they have, we were talking amongst, I don't know if you saw us, um, I asked them, would they be willing to sort of try and put this together now for a full rollout in the fall? This is all but one of my officers. Yeah, yeah, he had to leave. So, um, and he went to conference, these two went to conference, and then we have our one of our seniors over there who's sitting there on his phone. I see you. Um, went to conference and you're right, HOSA is generalized, although they have specific things that they do at conference in um within hosa it's more of a community as well as, you know community outreach as well as leadership getting them geared towards that and having that mindset of being within the medical field but it sounds like this is specifically for phys people who are interested in becoming a physician even though i did hear you say that down the line possibly sort of like offshoots like for nursing or veterinarian or something of that or pharmacist even though vets are docs too, they're just animal docs. Um, so our pharmacist, I would say. Um, I, no, I don't think there's gonna be com competition here. I think that they are like very interested because most of them wanna go into the medical field. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. And, and I just put your email in here. So I'm gonna be reaching out to you um, um, for more information on how to do this. Cause it, it's, it's even helping me think about how I'm set, how I have had them set up too. So, well, and Miss McFall, if I can join in uh, really quick, because I've been doing a lot of research on HOSA um, here in the state and just looking at, at a couple of things. One of them being the fact that we can really make this focus and localized. In other words, what are the needs of Nevada specifically? How we can empower those those professions that are in very very high demand here locally. Um, the second thing that we could really uh, we can really work at that I think would be is working to make it more inclusivity. So in other words, it's not just the 4.0 excelling students that are really driven, but those 2.0 students that might want a job as a CNA. The reason I had Veronica on the call is because she works with the Department of Workforce Education, the, yeah, the Department of Workforce Education and DSN. So for example, if you needed to bring in a CPR class or a CNA class, um, so that when they're graduating, they graduate as CNAs. Maybe they weren't able to get into the career and technical education um, program, but they may be able to get that take advantage of that um, on behalf of CSN that may be able to send a teacher to be able to go give that instruction at the high school. So for me, it's kind of closing gaps, closing barriers and looking for more inclusivity for people that might not have been serious about HOSA in 10th grade, but maybe in 11th and 12th grade, they want to get involved in healthcare, or maybe they, <coughs> excuse me, they don't want to go as far as physician. So that's when me and Brianna was talking. Her group was very, very focused on physicians specifically. Um, so that's kind of how they have broadened out. Uh, we would want to see how we can kind of expand these to other professions that, again, maybe it's just entry level, but they would be involved and included as well. That was my concern, too, because there are several students in here who are going into different besides becoming a um, patient care or patient directed doctor. There, so I, that was my concern, but we could definitely do that here, and I am all for it. it just, just make my life even more crazy. It's fine. It's fine. Well, I'll um, help you out with that, McFall. So if you want you. me to take on the advisor lead for this one, while you yes, do, yes, and I'll be secondary. Yeah, 
We can okay. we'll talk about it. Okay. Also, if I can add in, if it kind of gives you guys a little bit more peace of mind, because I created this club and it wasn't like CCSD created like HOSA is, it was very student led for me because my advisor was my environment teacher and she was also kind of busy. So with her, with my club, it was very student led. Like I was the one reaching out to doctors. I was the one setting up the meetings, doing the meetings, coming up with the questions. All my advisor really did was just be there for the meetings, like supervise and not saying that's how it has to be, but in, I don't want you guys to think like this is going to be really busy because your students can try to take the wheel a little bit. That way it's not all the work and pressure on you. And it's kind of like, you know, student led. I think that's what made this so amazing because there's a saying that if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And that's kind of how I felt. So the fact that I, my advisor let me take the wheel on this thing, I think that's why I was able to really push it to higher levels than I could have ever imagined. So are there any other questions from anyone or concerns? I would be interested in hearing from your students that are in the room as to what their perspectives are. What does this imply to you? What, what's your reaction to this presentation and discussion? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Angelique. I'm the president of HOSA. And I think this is a really good idea because like you guys were mentioning earlier, it's um, HOSA is more generalized, but this club, um, it looks like it'll help you with like, your, what, you, what you want to specialize in, you know? Like the CNA thing, I was definitely thinking of getting a certification there before I start um, nursing school. So I like that we'll have access to that. And I just think it's a really great opportunity for everyone. Yeah, I think that's really awesome. And another thing me and Diego talked about at our last meeting was how far we can really like push this thing, which is really cool. Like I think he had an idea for possibly making it almost like educational meetings where you have a certain professional come in and like actually show you like an example of stuff. Like, I guess if you were a nurse, cause one time in my biomed class, we had something similar where we had like a dummy arm and we were taught how to give an IV. So your meetings don't only have to be fireside. If we can get the connections, it could possibly turn into a lot of educational meetings and like tangible experiences, things you can like, not just hear or listen to, but actually like see for yourself. I think examples of that would be stop the bleed or CPR, basic CPR training. These are things that are certifications that can really help save lives. Um, and I think it's, you, you may have those in some of your classes now, um, and, and I, don't, I don't know, but I think the Medical Society and our members would be glad to assist with some of those types of, of trainings. We offer yeah. those here at TSN. Really? Yeah, I'm yes, actually certified because I was a lifeguard last summer at the Mandalay Bay. So I totally get what you guys mean with the CPR. And yeah, I just think there's so many ideas that are starting to seem very possible with this club. And it's super exciting. Um, I'm Jalen. I'm a senior right now in China. And I think this is a very great idea. I kind of wish that this was something that was done earlier into the year and maybe like someone else could have um, taken the lead to um, suggest a club or anything that will really bring out other students who might be interested in these. And another thing that I wanted to touch on was um, it being not only for those that have like really high GPAs, because I myself didn't really have a high GPA at a moment. And um, seeing that there was so many clubs and um, other areas where you have to have a high GPA just to get in or just to get recognized. I feel that this is really great because I've seen students as well with lower GPAs who struggled, especially during the COVID year, um, be interested in these type of areas. And I think this is such a great idea because then others that are younger um, could get into these fields and get more interest. And even if they weren't as interested now, maybe later on, 
into the year. So, yeah. and I think one of the keys that uh, just just to let you guys know, I mean, our vision on this is not just to have Cheyenne, but that you guys be, you know, that that second one following behind, setting the template for how it's done. We want to make it on the outside. And this is one of the reasons I wanted Dr. Reeves and I wanted Veronica on the call to let you know that there are a lot of people that want to help you guys in your career in healthcare. We don't want you to feel like this is just all on you, figure it out until you make it in, but that there are adults and professionals that want to step alongside you and want to help you guys to be able to enter this career field and make it as easy as possible for you to do that. So as we begin to expand to other high schools, that you guys might be able to also mentor other high schools and help them get their medical society started. And then in the meantime, us on the outside will work to gather all the resources. So what you guys, whatever you guys need, you're able to easily tap into those to be able to learn more. Is there any other questions? I have one. Um, Brianna, how long did it take for you to do all of that intro stuff before you had the, the board and all of that? How it took two months preparation, which is why we had our first meeting in November. So yeah, it wasn't too long. A lot of it is paperwork and approvals. Like it took a little bit to even find an advisor because you know, a lot of teachers are busy, they have other commitments, they can't stay after school, which is another reason why I think monthly meetings are just like a win-win for everybody. It's not like some super overbearing club. You get to be in a cool club without having to be there every single week because some people might not have like the schedule that will work with that, you know? Okay, thank you, Brianna. And I will be sending you an email. And so will my officer. Looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> if, if I can chime in. So one of the things that me and Brianna were talking about as we were planning the expansion of East Miss Ashford is, uh, or Miss Ashford, I'm sorry, Miss McFowler. Um, we had discussed looking for corporate partners. Um, so uh, there is a member of Heels that represents like Dunkin' Donuts and Kohl's. So to see if we can start getting some corporate sponsorships. I also have a friend that uh, owns um, Pops Cheesesteaks. And she's always said, hey, if there's something I can give back to the community. And so if, if that's a tool that we can use to foster and get these started, that's something that we can, we can make work from the outside in. My goal being that I want the the kids to focus as much as possible on the career pathways, on being able to seek that mentorship and anything that's external that we as an industry can step in and help to serve. So instead of them spending a month trying to find physicians that are willing to speak, we can go out and get those physicians. They want a respiratory therapist. We can get those opportunities to either go to, you know, event unit or things like that, that we would be able to work on the outside with the clubs to be able to empower them. Can you share the slides with us? Yes, of course. I can have Diego. I think he should have everyone's email. If you could just forward that to me whenever you can. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Contact info. Awesome. Thank you. And then also, if you guys want to get more tips or just see kind of how things are going in my club, you can always add my Instagram. It's just GVHS Medical Society, one word, no dots or anything. That way we can all like kind of stay in touch. Also, if you need to DM me with any questions, totally here for you. Great. Well, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for uh, coming in today and being able to jump on. I don't know if anyone, Dr. Reeves, Veronica, if you guys have anything to add. I, think Veronica I, don't, Reeves, I don't right now. This is great. Great kickoff. Thank you very much. No, I'm good. But we do need, I think that it, it, this is a great start. And this is a way that we could also see how we could also offer our our CPR class to to be to begin with and then move forward from that. Fantastic.
Well, thank you guys very much. We'll start doing an inventory. I have a meeting with some uh, a principal uh, that is close friends with about 15 other principals. So that's why we recorded this call um, to see how we can start getting these going. Because I feel like once we get them going, we're going to have a little bit of traction. and There'll be uh, plenty of work to do on the outside. But uh, again, Brianna, thank you for the presentation. You continue to amaze me. You've done a wonderful job. And I'm, I'm excited for all the kids over at Cheyenne. Uh, that have excelled and have done well and are looking at it and your your wonderful teachers that have uh, put, put their hard work into this. Thank you. This means so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope to hear from you guys. Also, if you guys need any more tips or questions, like I mentioned earlier, totally let me know. We could do a follow-up meeting where I could get more into the nitty-gritty of my That's good. All right. Awesome. Thank Sounds you guys. Good. Thank you for tuning. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Thank you for joining this meeting with the GVHS Medical Society for the Cheyenne High School presentation. So first, meet the presenters. We kind of went over an introduction, but basically, my name is Brianna Shaw. I am a junior at Green Valley High School. I am also a dual enrollment student at UNLV with aspirations to get my associate's degree in science next year when I graduate. I'm the president of the GVHS Medical Society. I am also a year round volunteer at the Summerlin Hospital in the NICU ward and the maternity and labor ward. And my career choice that I wanna be is an OBGYN. And then we also have Mr. Trujillo who is the CEO of Las Vegas Heels. HEALS stands for Health, Education, Advocacy, and Leadership in Southern Nevada. He is an expert in advancing and connecting and improving the healthcare community in Nevada. He is also going to be the strategic partner in connecting the clubs with industry, a key leader in addressing the, health, the healthcare workforce shortage in Nevada. So what is the GVHS Medical Society? The GVHS Medical Society is a club where members gain knowledge of the journey to becoming a physician. Each month, our club hosts fireside chats with physicians from various specialties. During these sessions, we delve into the insights of their specialties, what inspired them to pursue medicine, and what a day in the life of their practice looks like, and the challenges and rewards that they face. These discussions provide invaluable advice and inspiration for high school students aspiring to have a career in medicine. Thanks to Mr. Trujillo's enthusiasm for our club's efforts, he has linked us with invaluable connections that will create a tangible experience for our members. Through these connections, we organize field trips to hospitals and medical schools, offering our members a glimpse of medical student and physician life. We currently have plans to visit the Toro Medical School and the UMC Hospital next month. And at the corner is a picture of me and my club. This was our yearbook picture. So how is the Medical Society different from HOSA? HOSA provides a broad overview of healthcare careers and leadership experience, offering valuable insights into the healthcare industry as a whole. In contrast, a Medical Society club offers a specialized focus on the journey for various healthcare specialties, while also offering a localized support system that focuses on Nevada's needs. At Green Valley High School, Medical Society offers a specialized focus on the journey to becoming a physician. However, we envision creating subchapters within the Medical Society so we can focus on other key special areas, similar to clusters that will further enhance our members' understanding and exploration of different medical fields. The pathway to various specialties can be different to generalize as it can vary significantly, highlighting a need for specialized exploration. Another main focus is offering inclusivity that doesn't have a minimum criteria such as a minimum GPA, so it caters to all students who desire to work in healthcare. We consider medical society to be a complement to, rather than a competitor of HOSA, providing a specialized and immersed experience for students passionate about healthcare. So I'm going to go over the key steps in establishing a medical society club. There are four phases, and keep in mind that this is a high-level overview, but I have many more personal tips for each phase with those details that we can cover in a follow-up meeting by request. So phase one was our pre preliminary setup. Establish a club name. 
So this is what I did and I came up, I just put my high school and medical society. So that's probably what I would recommend so that, cause it sounds kind of serious, but it also sounds like not too like scary serious. So I think that's a really good thing. Like Cheyenne Medical Society, for example, it sounds like a professional name, but still speakable to kids. Next, we created an Instagram. So this is how I kind of got the word around my school. And also I started building a rapport with my doctors who I wanted to interview in the fireside chats. Then I also created a Gmail and a Remind account. So I use my Remind as my main form of communication for group things like club announcements, because it gets hard to have to email everyone individually and maybe you miss someone. So with Remind, you have to be in my Remind to be considered a member because that's how you're going to get all the announcements and reminders and all of that. Lastly, I created a Google interest form where this is where we also had, it was like a QR code that you could scan. And with that, you're able to put in your Gmail, like your school account, your name and stuff. So I'll always have your contact information. And it's just saying like, hey, I'm interested, but I'm not so sure. So yeah, that also helped a lot. Phase two was the club formation setup. This is where it gets more into the logistics of making the club. So first I had to create a club constitution. Don't worry, I have a template that I found that worked really well for it. And this kind of goes over the rules you want in your club, the, yeah, basically the rules. So like some of them can be about attendance. Your members have to have a specific attendance, be a member, an official member of your club, et cetera. Next, I adopted a mission statement. I also created the standard mission statement for a medical society, so I could I also have that. And this just kind of goes over what your club is, what you want kids to take away from your club, and what you want the school to gain from your club. Then I secured a club advisor. I actually chose my biomed teacher, who's also the advisor for HOSA, and she's been my medical society advisor too. Then I created a club flyer. I also have a sample flyer template if you guys need. With this, I just had the, the most important things to have on your club flyers is basically the advisor's room, the advisor's name, and a certain form of communication. For me, I put the club's Instagram on the flyer. And then just some details about when we meet, where we meet, and how often. So you kind of know where to go if you have questions. Lastly, I registered all my paperwork, which is kind of what I just went over with my school's activity center to get it all approved. Phase three was the post approval steps. So this is what you do after everything's approved. I started with emailing all the math and science department teachers announcing the club. So this is a perfect opportunity to also ask them for their top students. So you could start thinking of board candidates because I was a new student this year at my school. So I didn't really have an idea of who I would have for my board, but I knew I wanted someone who was like professional. So this was an awesome opportunity for them to send me their top students. And this also helped because I told them, can you just tell every one of your classes just, oh, there's a medical society club. If you're interested, here's the information. So that also helped get a little bit of buzz around with the club. Next, I also posted flyers in the math and science classes. So a lot of teachers should be fine with you posting your flyer inside the room. And we also put them in the hallways for every hallway. Then I started reviewing resumes for a board position. I think having your board members give you a resume before you induct them is crucial because it kind of brings a little bit more serious back into the club like they see this isn't just some oh here's a position here's a position like they take it more serious if they had to put in a resume and all that and this will also help you later which i'll go over in a little bit but after that i appointed my executive board so for my club i have president which is me a vice president a treasurer and a secretary that's been going pretty smoothly for my club, so that might be all you need, but depending on different schools, different activities, if you need to add more positions, that totally works too. And then I also created a bio for each board member, including a headshot. So I created this part for my board 
based on their resume info. I saw all their accomplishments on the resume and I typed it all into a nice bio. And then I put a picture of them on like a little flyer and I posted that on our Instagram. You could also see the samples later in this presentation. I included them, so that is really cool. And then this is also posted on our IG and it was in our club's first inaugural meeting. So phase four is to how to prepare for your first meeting. Start with securing a physician to speak at the fireside chat. A quick tip is Mr. Trujillo has graciously volunteered to assist clubs with this task by providing clubs with the list of doctors who are ready to participate. So that is really awesome. And it's gonna make things a whole lot easier than it was for me when I first started. Next, I researched their background to brainstorm five questions because for your members and your doctors, if they go through your profile, asking the same five questions every meeting can start to get really redundant and you don't really get a clear answer because if I have a doctor who is your specific medical field that you wanna be in, but it's not really personal questions. So it's really good when you have your doctors to look at their profiles on Instagram, look at their practice, look at their website to kind of customize and get deeper questions to get deeper answers for your members. Next, I sent the questions to the physician one week ahead. This is also good so that they have time to look over it, kind of brainstorm their answers so that it's not all like they're hearing it for the first time on the meeting. They kind of have an idea of what they're gonna say. And also in the questions, I always include a well-written comprehensive introduction summary of the doctor. This allows a chance for corrections and edits. If you send it to them a week ahead, like, hey, this isn't right. You know, if you miss one thing, you, they could always tell you before the actual meeting. None so far, but it's just in case for good measure. This also kind of gets them a feel good vibe right before the questions of the meeting starts because they get to hear a replay of all of their accomplishments in a nice introduction. And it also gets our members excited because they have a good idea of exactly who they're talking to, not just a doctor. Next, what I did is I did a practice run of the fireside chat with my executive board. I did this the day before our meeting, for our first meeting, just so everyone can practice going over their questions. That way, when they're asking it in front of the doctor, there's not a lot of stuttering or failing of words and stuff. So this is always good to make sure everyone's prepared so your meeting can go smoothly and also look smooth. Lastly, I prepared a presentation slide for my club meeting. Another tip is our club is not just about the fireside chats. Every single meeting, a presentation for club updates and announcements is always covered. So club timing considerations. It's important to think about how often and for how long club meetings should be. Since many high achieving students have other commitments like sports or a job, I decided to have our meetings monthly. This way, more students who join might not be able to commit to weekly meetings. For example, our school's HOSA club meets weekly, just like your guys's. So by us having our meetings once every month, it allows students to potentially be able to join both clubs without any time conflicts. In fact, one of our board members is actually a member of HOSA, so this schedule works well for them too. Unlocking success, exclusive insights and tips. This presentation covered the highlights of the club formation process, but there seriously is so much more to share. I'm happy to provide additional tips in a follow-up meeting presentation available by request. For example, how to secure commitment from busy physicians, what to do after your fireside chat, strategies to boost student participation, a sample club flyer, crafting compelling fireside chat questions, how to create a standard format for the firesides, sample clips of actual fireside chats and physician bios, sample of fireside chat questions and introduction, mastering the fireside chat etiquette, which is also very important for the board members who are on the call and also your members, even though the doctor can't see them, it's always important to remind them they have to have fireside chat etiquette. Drafting a constitution for long-term success and continuity considerations and other important tips to consider. So if you guys need more information, such as any of these that I just mentioned, totally hit me up and we'll be able to maybe set up a follow-up meeting to give more details.
So next is our GVHS Medical Society inaugural meeting presentation. I'm just going to give you guys a quick run through of what our first meeting as the GVHS Medical Society presentation looked like. Also, notice how the biographies look for me and my board members. I use the information from the resumes to highlight the executive board members' achievements, interests, and career aspirations in a consistent and professional format. So this was the first slide. It was meet your president, because I think it's a good idea for our members to have an idea of who the board members are. This way, they're also comfortable talking with us if they have any questions or anything. So kind of like what I told you guys, I mentioned how I'm a junior a dual enrollment student, how I want to get my associate's degree in science when I graduate high school next year, and then some other cool accomplishments of mine, like National Honor Society, the career I want, my volunteer work, and also how I am an advocate for women's rights, including leading protests for causes that were close to my heart. And I'm excited to start this club. And then over here, you could see a deeper bio, which is also on my Instagram. So then I have my vice president, Jamie. This was her bio. So this is kind of what I meant when I said I created a flyer almost for their bio on our Instagram. So it looked like this, and these were her accomplishments. Same thing with our treasurer, Emma. And then this is when we had an open position. So if you don't end up filling up all your board members, that's totally fine. You could kind of use the same platform, and this is what I used. And this actually got a lot of prospects for secretaries. So that was really cool. And it also included what their job would be, and yeah. So our mission, our mission is to empower students aspiring to have a medical career with the knowledge, experience, and opportunities needed to excel on their academic journey towards becoming physicians. Our club members gain unique insights into the diverse world of healthcare by being part of an engaged audience that gets an exclusive look into a day in the life of physicians with various specialties. We connect our members with accomplished medical professionals who share their expertise and inspire our members to pursue their dreams. Additionally, we provide the guidance and support for all of our members to secure valuable volunteer positions at hospitals, a challenging yet rewarding path. Our commitment to fostering an early interest in the medical field not only equips our members with essential skills and knowledge, but it also enhances their college applications setting them on the path to a, to a successful future in healthcare. Together, we are dedicated to nurturing and becoming the next generation of compassionate and skilled healthcare leaders. So what are the benefits of joining GVHS Medical Society? Learn the academic journey to, required to become a physician. Be part of an audience that gets a look into the day of the life of physicians with various specialties. We already have our first guest speaker confirmed for the next meeting. Our first doctor that we interviewed was really awesome. She was Dr. Brathwaite, who is an OBGYN, and she actually is the owner of her own practice, which is Innovative Women's Care. Learn how to land to get hard to get, sorry, learn how to land hard to get volunteer positions at hospitals, and also boost your college applications with a proven early interest in the medical field. So how do I sign up? So this is also really good for you guys. If you guys start the club, I created a QR code for our Instagram because this presentation was on our teacher's board. So they were able to scan this and have link to our Instagram where we post stories of updates and announcements and reminders. And then all of our post posts are our fireside chats in the form of reels where you're able to watch the whole video through our profile. And then also we created an interest form here because not everyone has a cell phone or not everyone has social media. So this interest form was perfect for them to still let us know, hey, I'm interested, but I just don't have Instagram or something. So complete the interest form to the right by clicking on the QR, which will also be on the last page of this presentation. Follow us on Instagram and send us a DM at GVHS Medical Society. So DM is a direct message. And send us an email at GVHS Medical Society to confirm your interest in becoming a member. Also, if you receive an invitation from a mind, please accept it to be included in club communications. Next meeting on Tuesday, November 21st. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Brathwaite, an OBGYN and the owner of Innovative Women's Care. 
And then for since this was going to be our first official meeting in November, and it was right before Thanksgiving, we ordered canes for everyone, all of our members to enjoy while listening to the meeting. Thank you for your time questions. So that was the last slide of our um, first meeting, and that's the end of my presentation. So does anyone have any questions?